Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Ron Doyle on Maryland's Eastern Shore, just uh, finishing up another house here. I'm going to give you all a uh, little walkthrough of what you can expect to see on an uh, electrical rough end. This is a um, 3,000 square foot home. It is two and a half bathrooms. It is three bedrooms with the uh, unfinished bonus room. This is the uh, two car garage. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty big. It's bigger than normal you would normally see. We're going to start here at the panel. This is a uh, home line, a square D home line 4080 panel. Got all the wires pulled in, one left to do. One of the uh, RG6 runs going to the uh, entertainment center that's going to be mounted on a gas uh, fireplace. But I want to get this video before it gets dark on me. So what we've got going on and what we've used in this house is a uh, thousand foot of 12.2 NM wire, 2,000 feet of 14.2. 750 feet of 14.3, 65 feet of 10.2, 20 foot of 10.3, 40 foot of 8.3, 40 foot of 6.2, 300 foot of uh, RG6, and 100 foot of 18.2 and 18.3 wire for doorbell. But uh, basically I'm going to give you all a little, a little uh, walk around of what you can expect to see. Now so far the, the uh, I'm I'm the one that's finished the sprinkler guy you see the orange pipes that go through the sprinkler guy is uh, finished his riser comes down uh, This is the mud room his riser comes down right there. He's finished the plumbers not finished and the HVAC guys not finished uh, There's there's actually my spools that are uh, left over, but uh, this house is uh, exterior walls are 2 by 6 construction interior walls uh, are 2 by 4 construction uh, the adjacent wall to the garage is 2 by 6 but everything starts here. I've got a few uh, home run poles that are going underneath. I've got one RG6 wire that is being pulled underneath. Everything else is up and overhead. As you can see, these are these are RG6 uh, TV wires. And uh, what I like to do is uh, drill an over, two oversized holes and I usually split the difference. And I try to keep them as straight as possible so that my pulling can be done by one person. So I have to pull from, have to pull from the panel down these series of holes and pull extra slack right at this point here and then I pull them down those sets of holes and down those sets of holes but uh let's let's start you out at the front door got a uh, two-third view uh, double French door coming in this customer opted for four ceiling cans right there doorbell on the right hand side and uh we're gonna do a walk around uh, i've got one outlet on the uh, front of the porch on that side we've got one outlet on the front of the porch on this side we have got you can see that white box that's an outlet for the back deck area here they opted for two lights uh through the back wall you got a light there and got a light right there right where that hole's at but uh as you're coming through this front door area here this is the uh foyer area this area right here is an office area uh lots of windows got a nice uh got a nice view and this is uh waterfront property there's a creek that goes around through the back of the property uh this is the area that takes you upstairs uh this wall this wall was not calculated right they were going to put the hvac unit underneath the house they decided to do it in this closet this is also the coat closet you can see a header going across so that it's going to be a lack of room in that closet uh kind of interesting to see what's going to happen with this the uh, space that's under the stairwell right here is dead space so coming in this front door as you would normally shut the door this is the uh, it's this is the main door. This is the secondary door. Your uh, light switches are on this side. Uh, the customer opted for a post lamp outside. The post lamp outside is protected by a GFI directly below, and I'm probably going to put a blank face GFI down below. This is tied on a lighting circuit, so if there's an arc fault issue, it's going to trip at the panel right there in the garage. If it is a GFI issue, it's going to trip right here. I choose to separate the two so that 
if it is a GFI issue, it's not going to trip the whole lighting circuit, everything that's on this. But his post lamp is on that stake, wires coiled up, and that trench cuts all the way over through here. Comes in on like a 45, right down through here, and it goes into the side of the house right there. Another switch is for this can light. That's a smoke detector. Uh, another switch is gonna be for this overhead light. And the other switch is for the four can lights that's outside. This is the light switch for the uh, this closet, uh, mechanical room slash coat closet. The wire that you see coming from that box down, that's for the gas furnace. That I have a uh, gas furnace uh, switch plate on that. Uh, gas furnace is going to be sitting right in here now coming into this room this is the great room large living room this is a bump out for the gas fireplace uh, gas guys have not came here yet this is an end of wall tv box and i have a conduit pole which is an inch and a half that goes from there that can be fished for your low voltage on this side your 120 volt on that side and the entertainment equipment is going to be coming out through here and i've got a cut box basically cut the, the back of the box out to make a low voltage ring for it and uh you can do your future pulls with your rope through your uh, conduit uh this is for the entertainment equipment to power power it up on this particular side over here get an outlet he's going to have built-in cabinets on this side he's going to have a built-in cabinet on this side to house the uh, tv equipment and uh Wire comes from this living room circuit. It's fed underneath the house. It's coiled up down in here. And this is for the uh, built-in gas fireplace. So as you're coming through this front door coming in, I try to keep my switches separate, right side and left side. This side pertains to this room. So it's less confusing to the people. First switch that you come to, this is four ceiling cans. Two, three, and four. That kind of lights the uh, the perimeter. And then the other switch that's at this box here is going to be for a remote controlled fan light combo right from there. Now, uh, this is the switch for the uh, office area. And I, every box that I use in a room, I do a fan rated box. So if the customer ever chooses to, they can install a fan there later. He's so coming into the living room if you look to this side you've got three gang switch box and you've got ceiling cans in the kitchen this is the kitchen area all this is kitchen area right here kitchen stops somewhere over in here and down to here they've got a total of five cans in this in the uh, kitchen one two three four and five now the other switch is uh for the pendants that are over the island he's going to do three pendants and if you see this wire coming across here, you can see this wire, how it zigzags back and forth. Now these, these uh, Romax staples are stapled loosely. This guy did not have a kitchen layout for me to, to follow. So as you can see, it ends right there. Now I'll, what I'll end up doing is using a hole saw after he gets the island installed. It's gonna go somewhere in here. I'll do a uh, laser off the center of the island and I'll shoot it up and I'll do three equal measurements drilling a hole saw through the ceiling I can find that wire and I can do my tie-in now on uh, uh, this particular corner he's doing a 12 inch cabinet he's doing a refrigerator so the refrigerator goes over that water valve and this outlet or the refrigerator and then his cabinets are going to start from here and go to the corner now code requirement is you have to have one within 24 inches of the corner which that one suffices that and then you have to have one no more than every four feet apart from there to there and you have to have one from the edge of the refrigerator over to that point which will be 24 like i said this one will cover this piece of cabinet and then we've got another outlet that's over here and it's just within four foot of this outlet now right here you got the uh 8.3 coming down for the range right down here so the range is going to sit somewhere in here he didn't have any of this laid out and i requested it and he gave me a center to center measurement from the center of the range to the center of the doorway. And he also gave me a measurement 
from the edge of the doorway to the center. His measurements were within three and a half inches of equaling out. So got the range established, got the uh, built-in microwave established up here. And then from his range measurements, I'm within 24 inches of the edge of the range for the first outlet. Now I'm within four foot from that one to that one. Now his outlet, his island, or excuse me, his cabinets are gonna stop somewhere in here. I've gotta serve another wall area right here. So there's gonna be an outlet there. And this is the dining room area. So I've got one in, one here, one there, and one there. All this is dining room area. Now, a lot of people might not know it, but uh, this is a sliding door. This is the non-functioning part of the sliding door. This accounts for usable wall space. A lot of people don't know that. So within six foot of the edge of this, this door, I'm not going to slide it open because the snow is going to fall in. Six foot from the edge of this doorway, I have to have an outlet. That's what that outlet's for. And that outlet to that outlet right there is within 12, and that one to that one is within 12. Now, you also have to have one within six feet of the edge of this doorway, breaking up the distance between these three outlets. This is just the best place for it. Now, this is the, uh, the mudroom area egressing into the garage. You come in, you'll be able to turn your lights on. Now, I opted to put them just to the edge of the doorway here because if I put them on this side, they're going to fall behind the washer and the dryer, which I do not want to happen, especially if they do choose to do a front load washer and dryer. You're always going to have to reach behind a washer and dryer to turn them on. So definitely didn't want them here. Customer was all right putting them here. Uh, I got a four gang box. Um, he opted for two lights on either side of the garage door. There's one there. There's one on that side, and you've got two overhead lights in this garage, which are there and there. So one is the uh, exterior garage lights, one is the interior garage lights, one is a spotlight. He's got a spotlight, center of the garage door, 20 foot up on the side of the house. So they can play basketball to the edge of dark. If it gets dark on them, they can keep playing. It's gonna light basically the front of this garage area up. And then the other switch is for the light that's overhead as you come into this mudroom. Now, this area here is a kitchen pantry. This outlet here, because it's labeled on the print as kitchen pantry, this outlet is tied into your kitchen counter circuit. This is a lighting circuit. This is tied for your overhead light. This room right here is a half bathroom. It is big enough to do a full bathroom in this area, uh, but for some reason, me talking to the plumbers, uh, the measurements weren't working out. So they decided to do the uh, sink, which I got a vanity light here, deciding to do a toilet here, and all of this is open floor space. Uh, this window kind of throws the, um, the idea of making this a full bathroom, it kind of throws it out the window. So they're getting a half bath in here. Wash machine, dryer on that side dryer box. They're doing a Renai. This is the hookups for the Renai. This is my outlet that powers the Renai. This is another outlet that I give them for doing a folding table over here. Now coming back through, we're going into the kitchen area. I took you to that switch location over there. Now that switch location over there has a three-way. goes from here to this box here, and this turns on the kitchen cans. And the other switch over here turns on it's a three-way, turns on the dining light to that doorway. Now from that doorway, as you're coming into the house, you'll have a three-way over there that'll control the ceiling cans in this living room. The other switch, like I was telling you before, is the two outside lights. There's one there and one right there. And the other switch controls the kitchen cans. So there's a four-way circuit. There's a four-way circuit on these kitchen cans. You can switch it here, there, and over there. And coming through the house, let's uh, take you upstairs just so you got an idea what this looks like. All this is, this is a wall, but all this is loft area. So they're gonna have hand railing from there all the way over to that wall. This is temporary construction railing that has to be up to code uh, so that the construction workers don't get injured. But uh, I'm gonna walk you all upstairs. Now, sorry, I didn't tell you the uh, rest of the outlets. 
uh, this outlet here is within uh, six foot of the edge of this doorway. And then this serves the kitchen cabinet area. Or I say kitchen cabinet, entertainment cabinets. Uh, more like a dry bar. This is more of an entertainment area. Have to have an outlet within, uh, uh, starting over here, starting over here. Uh, edge of this doorway, so you don't get confused. Edge of this doorway, this is the functioning door. Edge of this doorway over to that outlet is within six feet, and then from that outlet to that outlet is within 12. Now, I usually like doing my outlets consistent, and if you notice that outlet's low, and that outlet's low, something happened with the windows. They ordered uh, transoms on these windows, and they had to end up cutting these down lower, which I had to drop my two outlets there and there. Like I said, this is the built-in gas fireplace TV box. This is where the flat screen TV is going to be. Now, uh, taking you through here, this wall is over 24. Well, technically, you need an outlet. Got it. Outlet's in the foyer area. This is this foyer area is considered living space. It's not a hallway. It's a foyer. So I have to have one on this corner. This outlet's not going to get used that much. Um, believe it or not, I need an outlet over here. The inspector would catch that if I didn't do it. That outlet, like I said, is going to be a blank face GFI that protects the post lamp. So that one doesn't count. And this one does. And that outlet has to be within six foot of the edge of the door. Not the trim, not the casing, the edge of the door. From here to there. It's got to be within six. Got an outlet over there serving this corner. And got another outlet over here serving this corner. So we're going to walk up the stairs. It does a 90 degree turn on us. Got an outlet serving this wall. I've got my uh, light switches. This light switch is uh, for the stairwell going down. Now what's tied on that is that light is a wall sconce and the customer opted for a ceiling can. Is going to light this uh, stairwell area. That's on the first switch. The second switch is uh, for the center ceiling light fan if they choose. That's on a fan rated box. This switch right here it, this switch here is a three-way. There's another three-way switch on that wall there, and that's to control these three wall sconces. One there, one there, and one there. And this is this is to illuminate this walkway area. The customer chose not to do ceiling cans in this area because if these lights are on, it's going to flood the living room, which he didn't want. So I told him the options are wall sconces. He can do up shines or he can do down shine wall sconces uh, so we if he does a reversible wall sconce we can flip them and try to keep the light up on this loft area and keep it from flooding down there if they're watching TV so there's no there's no glare on the TV or shining down on them uh, the there's an there's a wire coiled up under this floor approximately right here he wants a floor outlet that I've got to install after the hardwoods down so coming up, got an uh, outlet that serves this, this wall here. Got a, uh, this is, believe it or not, this is a bedroom. Uh, switch, overhead light, fan if they choose. First outlet is within six feet of the door. That one's pretty close. And then from there to there is within 12. And then from that outlet to that outlet is within 12. And in house, it has to be within six feet from the edge of that door, which is a, a closet. It'll be six feet from the edge of that door from there within six feet now this outlet's not going to get used that much we just came in this room that outlet's got to be within six feet of the edge of this door this is a hallway outlet that serves this short hallway that starts there travels down to the store jam and this is a full bath got the shower on this side Got a uh, exhaust fan light. Usually it's a, uh, I installed the Braum 678 model. Now there is no wall space to put switches. So this particular application, the door is gonna swing this way. I've got these switches installed so that the edge of the door is gonna stop right here before the switch. Don't wanna land the switches behind the doorway. It's, it's nothing to code saying that you can't do that. I just choose not to. I wanna be able to see the switches when I walk in. Um, 
got a vanity light and an exhaust fan light combo toilet vanity vanity light a window right beside the vanity it's a really small bathroom and this here is another bedroom got to have an outlet within six feet of the edge of the door to the first outlet and you got a double closet and then you have to be within six feet from the edge of that door closet door to that outlet now I'm within 12 feet from that outlet to that outlet and I'm within 12 feet from that outlet to that outlet and I'm also within six feet from the edge of that door to that outlet all right I'm leaving this in this bedroom now this is this is a bonus room over the garage you can see the see the garage right there and this is a bonus room that is unfinished so he's had me prep it with we had a bird flying around in here he's had me prep it with a fan rated pancake one switch we have a switch here this is for the attic light I'm gonna have a pull down staircase right here and that covers the attic light and the light for the bedroom. All right, I say, I'm sorry, not, this is not a bedroom. This is a future bonus room. None of this will be sheetrocked. It's just to have insulation. It's gonna have insulation in this wall. And then I have insulation in this wall here. And the rest of it won't be done. The owner's choosing to do this at a later date. Now, I did a future TV location here and a future power port right here. I'm gonna put a blank plate on it. This room isn't getting any power. Uh, there's no heating air equipment in here and I do not have to turn that on. All right, I'm gonna leave this, leave this bonus room. This area right here, this loft area, they're gonna use for gaming, game room. So it's, it's open to the downstairs uh, living room area. This is a closet. They chose to do an end wall TV box. I've got my uh, 120 volt and I've got my uh, low voltage box. That will supply to the end wall TV box. Now this outlet here has to be within six foot from the edge of that over to here. And I have to be within six feet to the edge of there. And this outlet here, this outlet right here, it's got to be within six feet from the edge of that doorway to the edge of that. I have to be within six feet from the edge of that closet door to there. So I got away with one outlet on that wall and one on that wall. I suggested to the owner of putting a floor outlet somewhere in here if they ever put a uh, sectional couch or a couch in a, in a love seat they could have a table lamp right there on the corner he chose not to now this doorway is actually your master bedroom walking in the master bedroom he's got an overhead light right here um, this master bedroom is smaller in this area right here so that light's going to cover this area. Got three gang switch box. So first switch that you come to is the uh, this smaller area right here. And the second switch is your uh, four perimeter ceiling cans. So there, 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 and there. And then the other switch right here is going to be for your center fan. And I think he's doing remotes in pretty much every room on the fans. This is the master closet. He opted for two lights in the master closet, one there and one there, and they're switched from this location. Now, talking about smoke detectors, all right, I put it there instead of at the doorway because the HVAC guy got ahead of me and he put a re air return. Can't put, an, can't put a smoke detector by an air return. So it is right here in front of the closet door on this closer to the exterior wall. Um, there was two windows there and there and they took them out for some reason this is uh this is the master uh bathroom as you come in uh the uh got three gang switch here first one's going to be uh, vanity lights which are getting going there and there on that pancake and that slide rail box lined up with center of my piping so that it's directly above the sink the second location is going to be your exhaust fan or uh, your light on the exhaust fan and an exhaust fan this is the gfi it's a double ball sink so i have to have two outlets this would be gfi protected now this customer opted for a light which you can see that yellow wire hanging he wanted a ceiling can over the master shower 
but you can see the framing. This is going to have a wet pan and where that light falls over the rim of the shower wall has to be GFI protected. So that switch for that particular uh, can is going to be at that location. Now there is ceiling joist in the way. I can't get a can in that location. We're going to end up doing an LED wafer light. So that will be drilled and installed on trim out. Now you know that this is a shower. There's going to be a freestanding tub right here. Another Braum 678 model exhaust fan light combo. Got the window. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is snow on the floor. Um, you don't normally see this in the house, but uh, we are uh, March the 4th, uh, I'm sorry, January the 4th, 2022. We just had a snowstorm and it blew over the, blew under the eaves. Came in and landed on the floor in the master bedroom and the master bathroom. This is the uh, this is the toilet. Um, got a little uh, got a little wall separate separating us. No doorway, just a wall. Exiting this room. Talk about smoke detectors a little bit more. This room does not have to have a smoke detector. It is not a bedroom. Now it's coming up the stairway. Uh, you need a smoke detector on the first floor and second floor. Now the, the smoke detector has to be adjacent to bedrooms. There's a bedroom, there's a bedroom, there's a bedroom here. Okay, you can get away with one smoke detector. If you notice, there's an air return there. There's an air return right there. I can't put a smoke detector in this location. I have to keep it away. So, got the smoke detector location there that serves adjacent to bedroom quarters. There's a smoke detector in the bedroom there. And there is a smoke detector right there. Now as we go down the stairway, hopefully I'm not making you dizzy. As you get on the stairway, that's a smoke detector right there. That's one that serves the first floor. And that's all the smoke detectors that are in this house. So we're going to do a walk around outside the house. Cross space egress. This house has got a um, sewer alarm and it's got a sewer pump and they couldn't tell me the location so the wires are hanging and on this side right here we've got the post lamp wire coming out under the ground already trenched that in and uh, on this side of the crawl door you get thermostat wire hanging that's going to be the uh, doorbell transformer uh, and the service light and service outlet it's going to be right here and then somewhere in this area here um, the well company will hook up the uh, expansion tank for the well This area here will get a patio or deck in the future. Hunter's not doing it right now. Those are those two wall lights I was telling you about. One right there, one right there. That was the window that was taken out. This is where the HVAC condensing units are going to be. There's going to be uh, one here, one there. There's going to be one right here. Originally, we had planned to do a mini split system for that future bonus room, and now they opted to do a, uh, a regular uh, HVAC system. Uh, meter socket, service outlet for servicing the equipment. Has to be within 25 feet in line of sight. That's there. The uh, first GFI in this location is right there. That is a tamper. So it's a TRWR, tamper weather resistant. And this is the uh, this is an this is a extra duty Arlington wet located rated box. It's got a built-in J channel that I use on all the houses. So this installing this um, actually uh, uh, gets me out of the way of the vinyl siding guys, and it doesn't hold them up. Now they have to flash around this 
Uh, got the meter stock installed. I already got it flash taped around it with uh, Tyvek tape. Uh, this is a condensate discharge. Got my Arlington uh, bridge block. These are my uh, CATV cable wires coming out. Now, looking at this garage, got a light there. Got a light on that side. And that 20 foot tall light is in between those two windows. It's going to shine down for this driveway area right in here. The driveway is going to run right out where those tire tracks are. Nice little curved sidewalk goes right in here. This is where your post lamp is. This is where guests would come walking up to the house. So, lots of windows, lots of lights. Look, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Ron Dole with you. Uh, hopefully this uh, video was helped to you all uh, so you can see what uh, you can expect to see on a walkthrough after an electrician is done with your house. Hopefully this video was of some help to you. And uh, if you uh, like this content, please give me a like, press that like button. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, consider su subscribing to my channel for future